The Downtown Austin Alliance recently released its State of Downtown Report, a snapshot of factors like affordability, inclusivity, and public safety, but a big headline in the report, the vacancy rate for downtown offices. In 2023, it was at 18%, up from 14% the year before, and more than 2.5 million square feet of office space is under construction. So those rates are expected to get even higher. And joining us this afternoon to discuss why that is and what can really be done about this is Janelle Moffitt. She is the Chief Impact Officer at the Downtown Austin Alliance. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Okay, so we talked to you, I believe it was earlier this week or last week. You all had this report coming out. We know the reason for the increase in vacant spaces. Fewer people are working downtown. What were the kind of the headlines, the findings of this report regarding that? Yeah, so we've been tracking um, all sorts of indicators for downtown for the past five or so years. As you know, COVID hit us in 2020, and so we have been tracking those recovery uh, metrics, and foot traffic is one of those. And so we know that people are still working from home mm -hmm. a portion of the time. We also know that tourism has not fully returned. Tourism is roughly 90 to 95% of what it was in 2019. And so that change in activity in downtown makes us think about downtown differently. Mm. And w when you talk about thinking of downtown differently, you do have now, we're at a point where there are empty office spaces. Mm -hmm. And so you have to kind of think outside of the box. So yeah. there has been talk, I think, with the Alliance about maybe turning these office buildings into residential buildings, which of course mm -hmm. we do need more residential space in Austin, but that's not always feasible to do. Yeah, so for right now, if you've been tracking, you know, the, the development pipeline that we have in downtown, there's a lot of new construction. So part of that new construction composition is that conversions doesn't really make sense. They're not built for that use. Mm -hmm. And so we've done a lot of studies, we've done a lot of research with different um, practitioners in the city and found out that the stock in the downtown area isn't feasible for residential use but could be feasible for other uses and so you'll see that in that development pipeline where there's an increase in tourism space like hotels mm -hmm. and restaurants and things of that nature but converting to a residential space takes a whole new set of metrics and a whole new set of um, tools to to basically make that happen yeah, and let's dig deeper into the solutions that you reference. What are some of the other solutions, the other options that could really be used in these spaces? Yeah, and so something that we did launch last week was the Downtown Austin Space Activation Program. Mm. And so essentially we understand that downtown is in this transition. We've been lucky to be occupied in all of our spaces for several years. And so this new normal is something that we are trying to grapple with. And so in looking at the numbers, looking at the storefront vacancy number as well as the office vacancy number, matching that with the opportunities that the city has where there's several um, businesses and residents who are looking for a way to plug into downtown, we've launched this Downtown Austin Space Activation Program, which essentially we are stepping in to utilize those underutilized spaces and have pop-up businesses, pop-up events, and basically bring those spaces into life and have that community come into downtown and see downtown as a place for them. Mm -hmm. And so in the meantime, um, we know that it takes a while to get to lease a space. There's affordability issues. We want to make sure that in the meantime, downtown stays active and vibrant. Mm. So your report also talked about, the Alliance's report also talked yeah. about um, crime. Mm -hmm. It was relatively flat in downtown, mm -hmm. but yet at the same time, retailers that were polled, almost half of them said, they're still pretty concerned about mm -hmm. things like theft and property mm -hmm. damage. As you try to attract more people to downtown, mm -hmm. How do you address those concerns with them? That's exactly it. So there's shifting conditions in downtown all the time. Um, when it comes to reported crime versus non-reported crime, it's very tricky to find out what's, what's the truth there. What we do know is that there's less people in downtown, fundamentally at different days of the week and different times of the day. And so as that is shifting, yes, businesses have changed. And in those businesses, they are experiencing different, different things, whether it be, you know, there's less traffic on Mondays and Fridays because maybe that employee base is still at, at home, or um, people are coming to downtown on nights and weekends. And so there's an increase in foot traffic there. 
And so part of, you know, combating the crime is, yes, there's several resources that we have. You know, we're working with several um, partners on the local side as well as our city government but also just trying to bring more people in downtown through different activations, different activities, and working with employers to, to do the same. Um, encouraging their employees to come back, hosting different events, hosting different um, social gatherings, and really using downtown as more of a space that you've traditionally thought about, you know, whether it's, you know, it's just an office, but how can we also build in those other factors? you know, meeting other other tenants or other businesses, um, doing different pop-up shops, there's parks, there's all sorts of things to do. So how do you layer that all in and use all of the many transportation options that downtown has available to make your time in downtown more enjoyable? Mm. And then lastly, can we just talk about affordability? We know that uh, it, really any space can be hard to afford here mm -hmm. in Austin and downtown, it might be a little more pricey. Yeah. Are there any incentives for businesses looking to move mm -hmm. in uh, to really help help with that affordability piece. Yeah, so that's something we, we advocate for. Mm -hmm. So we are in the business of trying to manage downtown and make sure that it's as vibrant as it can be. And so those policies and those incentives is something that we are pressing um, for each and every day. Um, part of the thing is we're seeing those incentives in other cities and other towns all across the, the country. And so our state and our city has a very unique composition in terms of what incentives are there the market in downtown is still very strong. Mm -hmm. So part of trying to get resources to maintain, you know, live music and maintain an art and creative um, vibe or, or support small businesses, I personally haven't seen as much as I would see in other areas that are struggling more. And so what I think that we can do as a Downtown Austin Alliance is try to intervene that a little bit and try to make sure that we don't get to the point where we absolutely have to have all of those tools to make downtown thrive, but we are getting ahead of it to encourage those conversations and to encourage people to to lean in a little bit. And so that's part of that, you know, Downtown Austin Space Activation Program. That's part of some of the programs we've launched is we are are using these metrics to to explain what the challenges we're seeing up front and people are buying in. Mm -hmm. There's there's properties that are like, yes, we agree. How about we work together and collaborate on, you know, these innovative solutions absent of a standard policy or procedure available. Janelle Moffat with the Downtown Austin Alliance. Thank you so much yeah. for being here and breaking it all down for us. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you for yeah. having me.